TCU at Baylor. Baylor's a two and a half point underdog over under 57. Um, so all the TCU fans that are tuning in know that I'm probably going to say the bet Baylor, but maybe you shouldn't listen to me when I say fade TCU. I, I bet TCU twice this year. I'm 2-0. and oh. I faded them four times. I'm 0-4. Oh but when I go back and look, now look, last week was just dead wrong. TCU was the right side, deserved winner, deserved cover. But I didn't mind any of the other three bets. You know, took a Hail Mary, quarterback injuries, that I faded TCU. They get credit for last week, but they still have the same issues that we've talked about all season. And I, I've heard people on Twitter say that sometimes it's just your year. Could be. If they keep getting all the breaks, could be maybe their year. But that doesn't mean I have to bet that that's their year. I do think there comes a point when everyone's like, they're a, they're a fraud. So are they really a fraud if everyone is saying it? So it's not like I absolutely think that they should be like a seven point underdog here. Um, but I do make this game a true coin flip. And I like Baylor for a number of reasons. I was able to get a three minus 110. I would cheap three if you can buy it too, or wait for the three. I do think Baylor wins this game. It's just, we've talked about all the breaks TCU has gotten at now, so we don't need to revisit that. But they're also playing their ninth big game in a row. And historically, production does decline. Output does go down. And that's not factoring in when you consider that they've played nine big games in a row. Started with a rivalry game on the road against SMU. And then the Big 12 schedule. There's no breaks in the Big 12 schedule. So it is tough to just keep getting up. For these games, Baylor is, I mean, this is just a classic situational spot. Even if I love TCU, I'd be on Baylor here. Regardless, they got embarrassed last week. You should get their best effort. I think their defense actually matches up pretty well. TCU's defense still has issues. Their offense, look, was just beating up on horrific defenses all year. They didn't do much last week. I think they're a little banged up. And I, I think Baylor gets this done in a reversal of roles last year. TCU is an underdog, beat Baylor, upset them as I think seven and a half point underdogs at home, ended Baylor's dreams of going to the college football playoff. I think Baylor does the same here, although TCU maybe still has a shot if they then win out. For what it's worth, Dave Aranda, 5-0 and against the spread as an underdog against top 15 teams, covering by 13 points per game. That includes four consecutive outright wins over the past two seasons against the fourth, fifth, eighth, and 14th ranked teams. I think Baylor is the spot here. Baylor is the spot. This is a huge letdown spot. And, and I remember when we did our Big 12 preview over the summer, I said, I like TCU to win the Big 12. My issue is their bye week is so early in the season. How are they going to feel towards the end of the year? Sonny Dykes gets up to the podium in his presser about, I am so glad we have finalized our spot in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, you know, the Texas victory was, you know, a big win for our players because they didn't get recruited or they got shunned by Texas. They got to, you know, and he didn't say this outright, but he said they, you know, they got to beat their, their old coach and Gary Patterson. And then he made comments about how we've played a huge number of games in a row. Like <laughs> they wanted to get over this Texas hump so bad. Uh, I think the entire team has just been thinking about it, talking about it. They achieved so many things in one shot down in Austin. And I think this is a spot where they're just going to be completely deflated. It's not like they're playing great offensive football the last few weeks. They've had a lot of like consecutive drives without points. Now, Dave Aranda, he's been able to get Baylor to respond off a loss. He's four and one against the spread since the beginning of last season when they lose and the bears rush explosiveness with Richard, uh, Richard Reese. He's a true freshman there. That's the key to this game because TCU even though they've improved to seven, they still give up a ton of explosive rush. Richard Reese is tied with Kendra Miller for most rushing TDs in the Big 12. It shows you how important he is to this game and to this team. Listen, Blake Shapin, he's been hit or miss each game. Uh, we saw the last time he saw a 3-3-5 stack, which is what TCU runs with Joseph Gillespie. The last time he saw that was against Iowa State. He threw three touchdowns, no interceptions against the Cyclones. Uh, I don't think Shaven's going to have a problem reading this defense whatsoever. It's a great spot here. I, I do get a little nervous. The fact that Aranda's 
talking about how he couldn't get his defense lined up in the right place, that it was a, a bad week of practice, couldn't get them to respond, and they showed up at the game and they couldn't execute. But he said in some games, we just show up and we're ready to go. I, it's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde thing that he can't figure out on his own roster. So we're hoping we get good Baylor here because this is definitely a down spot for TCU. Yep, agree. Uh, yeah, there's Jekyll and Hyde Baylor. They're not an easy team to figure out. So knowing TCU, they're going to get the bad Baylor, but I think it's just too good of a spot, and there's some line value here that you got to back the Bears. Sick them. 